I've got a pretty interesting problem to show you guys today. And it boils down to whether or not a number can be expressed as the sum of two or more consecutive odd numbers. Okay, so let's look at it. I've broken it into three parts. We'll first answer the question, can 2021 be rewritten as the sum of two consecutive odd numbers? Then we'll answer the same question about 2022, and then we will approach the general problem. Okay, so let's get into it. So we'll start looking at this by investigating the structure of the sum of k consecutive odd numbers. So let's give ourselves a list of k consecutive odd numbers. So maybe the smallest number on our list will be 2n plus 1. So notice if n is equal to 0, we've got the odd number 1. If n is equal to 2, we've got the odd number 3, and so on and so forth. That means the next number on our list must be 2n plus 3. The one after that, 2n plus 5. That's because we need consecutive odd numbers. And then the very last one on our list will have the following form. 2n plus 2k minus 1. So notice that is 2n plus an odd number. And then we want to take the sum of all of these because our whole goal is when can a number be expressed as the sum of consecutive odd numbers. But can we simplify this a little bit? And I think we can. So let's notice that we've got k total terms here and each of those terms contain a 2n. So that means if we put everything together that has a 2n, we'll have 2n times k. Again, because there are k total terms. And then what's left over is 1 plus 3 plus 5 ending at 2k minus 1. And so we're getting each of those from what's left over after extracting this 2 times n from each of our sum ends. So let's maybe underline that in blue so we see where it's coming from. Next, we want to apply a pretty well-known formula, and that's the sum of the first k odd numbers is a perfect square. In fact, it is k squared. So I'll let you guys check that. I think I've proven it on the channel before, but there are a couple of pretty classic proofs. One involves induction. There's actually a nice geometric proof as well. Okay, so now that means we can simplify this whole thing to 2n times k plus k squared. This structure kind of hints that we should maybe factor a k out. That's going to give us k times 2n plus k. So if we can express 2021 in this following product form, then we can also express it as the sum of consecutive odd numbers. Okay, so let's maybe note that we have the following fact. 2021 factors as 43 times 47. I'll let you guys check that. But at this point, I've done several problems on the channel where we work with 2021. So this factoring is really well known to me at this point. Okay, so that means that one of these needs to play the role of k and the other one 2n plus k. Well, since 2n plus k is bigger than or equal to k, we probably want 43 to be equal to k and 47 to be equal to 2n plus k. Okay, so let's see if we can put this together to figure out what n is. So we've got 2n plus k is equal to 47. But then we also know that k is equal to 43, so that boils down to 2n is equal to 4, which means n is equal to 2. But if n is equal to 2, that means the starting portion of our sum is 2 times 2 plus 1, or 5. So what we have just done is derived the following expression for 2021 as the sum of consecutive odd numbers. So we've got 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus all the way up until we've had k total numbers. That ends at 89 equals 2021. So in this case, the answer to our question is yes. And this is the expression of 2021 in that form.
Another thing that's interesting to point out is that this is the only expression of 2021 as a sum of consecutive odd numbers. And that's because it factors as a product of two distinct primes. Okay, so now let's maybe summarize this exploration at the top of the next board and we'll move on to the next problem. We just got done proving that 2021 can in fact be expressed as the sum of consecutive odd numbers. And that expression is given by 5 plus 7 plus 9 all the way up to 89. Now we're going to explore the same question with 2022. So let's recall we had this closed form for the sum of k consecutive odd numbers. So really what we want to do is solve this equation right here equals 2022. So that means we have k times 2n plus k equals 2022. But we probably want to factor that into primes so we can decide who is playing the role of k and who is playing the role of 2n plus k. Let's notice that this factor is like 2 times 3 times 337. So notice that k is less than or equal to 2n plus k. So that means there are only a couple of choices that we can take for k. Notice we could take case 1 to be k is equal to 2. Now you might say, well, what about k is equal to 1? Well, that's not allowed for a couple of reasons here. First, we're looking at k consecutive odds. And here, we need at least two consecutive odd numbers. So that means with our setup, we cannot take k to be equal to 1. Furthermore, this number here is even. And an even number cannot be expressed as the sum of one odd number. That doesn't make any sense. So we have to start with k equals 2. So that's one possibility because 2 is a factor of 2022. k equals 3 is the next possibility. And finally, the last possibility will be k equals 6. And those are, in fact, all of the possibilities. Because if we were to include this factor of 337 in with k, then we would immediately have k outpacing the size of 2n plus k, which is impossible. OK, so let's explore each of these possibilities. So if k is equal to 2, that means 2n plus k, which in our case is 2n plus 2, is equal to the rest. That's going to be 3 times 337. But actually, this is a problem. And this is a problem that we're going to see with all of these, like kind of spoiler alert. And that is that this left-hand side of the equation is most definitely even whereas this right-hand side of the equation is most definitely odd. So that means we have an impossibility in this case right here when k is equal to 2. Okay, so now let's move on to the case when k is equal to 3. So that means that 2n plus k will be 2 times 337. And so we have 2n plus 3, because 3 is equal to k, is equal to 2 times 3, 3, 7. But now we have the same problem, just like kind of in reverse, if you will. This right-hand side is most definitely an even number. It's 2 times 337, whereas this left-hand side is most definitely an odd number. So that makes this possibility, well, impossible as well. So I'll mark this out. And then essentially the same thing goes for this k equals 6. It's so similar that I'm going to leave it as a little bit of a homework exercise. So what that means is that 222 cannot be expressed as the sum of two or more consecutive odd numbers. Okay, so let's put here that the answer is no. But now let's maybe dive into what's happening in general. We just got done determining that this case was impossible. And now we want to explore the general setup. So let's suppose we've got n, which is expressed as a sum of k consecutive odd numbers, but we've written that in its product form. Now let's notice that this breaks down into two cases. 
The first case is k is odd. So if k is odd, then that means that 2n plus k is also odd, but that means that n is odd. So at the moment, we haven't determined that any of the odd numbers are impossible to be written as the sum of some consecutive odd numbers. But let's look at our next case, which is when k is even, and we'll see that we'll run into a problem for some values of n, a problem that we saw in our last example. So if k is even, well, we add 2 into it, and we still have something that's even. So 2n plus k is also even. But if k and 2n plus k are both even, that means their product is a multiple of 4. So that means n is a multiple of 4. So that's why it didn't work in this case right here. We had an even number that was not a multiple of 4. Okay, so what we've seen is that it is not impossible if n is odd, and it is not impossible if n is a multiple of 4. What we really need to prove is that it is actually possible in those cases, and not just not impossible. But before we do that, I want to investigate this k equals odd case a little bit more carefully. So let's notice if n is prime, then its only factorization is, is 1 times n. But then since k is less than or equal to 2n plus k, that means that k has to be equal to 1, which means it's impossible in this case. So prime means impossible. So it looks like we've settled down on a rule which seems to be true. n could be any non-prime odd number, or it could be any even number, which is also a multiple of 4. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this stuff on the board, and then we'll finish it off. We're ready to finish this whole thing off with the following proposition, which classifies numbers that can be written as the sum of consecutive odds. And that is, n can be written as the sum of consecutive odd numbers if and only if n is odd and composite, or n is a multiple of 4. So to save room over here, I said that that is n is congruent to 0 mod 4. I've put here in quotes proof because we're really not going to do this forward direction carefully. We essentially did that verbally on the last board. So we'll just do that this reverse direction. So let's first suppose that n is odd and composite. But that tells us that n is equal to a times b. And we know that a and b are both odd, and we might as well order them so that a is bigger than 1 and b is bigger than a. So let's write this like this. So these are both odd. So since it's, since it's odd, it only factors as odd numbers. So that's pretty clear. And now we can set k equal a. So in other words, we're going to be summing a consecutive odd numbers. But that tells us that 2n plus k, or 2n plus a, must be equal to b. But then solving, which is not too hard to do, we see that n is equal to b minus a over 2. Now, some of this may seem a little bit problematic, but it's not. Notice dividing by 2 is not a problem because a and b are both odd, so that means b minus a is even, which means this is a whole number. And then we also do not have 0 in the numerator because b is strictly bigger than a. So we found values of k and n that work. And now maybe to finish this thing off, I think it looks really nice to write down exactly what our expression is. So let's take b minus a plus 1 plus b minus a plus 3 all the way up to b plus a minus 1. So that's the sum of a consecutive odd numbers. And you can easily check that this adds up to a times b, which is equal to n. So we've got it. So now let's look at the next case when n is a multiple of 
4. So if n is a multiple of 4, or in other words, if it's congruent to 0 mod 4, then we can write n as 4 times m. And in this case, it's actually quite a bit simpler than what we saw above in order to express this as the sum of consecutive odd numbers because we only need two consecutive odd numbers. So let's notice that four times m is the same thing as two times m minus one plus two times m plus one. Those are consecutive odd numbers and there's two of them, so we're good to go. Okay, so I think that finishes off the sketch of our proof well enough for our purposes, and that's a good place to stop.